The Little Island, a book for our times indeed. Let's not mention the B word. This is a lovely little book because in addition to being very humorous and lively and fun to look at, it also explores a number of contemporary issues in an accessible and highly engaging manner. Its animal allegory serves as both an entertaining read, but also as a useful conduit into conversations about Brexit with younger children. It also raises themes of the pitfalls of nostalgia, isolationism, and the need for compassion and empathy for others, but also encourages to build bridges, not walls. So this is The Little Island. In spite of everything I know about rampant consumerism, I still managed to order sort of clothes off the internet, which even as I pressed the send button, I knew were going to be so small that I'd need to unpick a few seams just to get them over my head. And what I like about Sneaky Beaky is that it talks about, I suppose, rampant consumerism, but in a very warm and engaging way. I mean, just look at him. Look at Sneaky Beaky. Look at his lovely little red... Um, bow tie. He has a little monogram briefcase which is not quite Burberry with SB on it. Um, and the things I love about it, I love the warmth of the relationship between hamster and bear. I love the fact that they play Jenga. I love the fact that there's a runaway granola machine. But I also love the fact that it's about friendship and it's also very, very funny. I want to tell you about Bally Rise Now or Never. I love this book. It explores the little mentioned role of Indian soldiers in the Second World War, focusing on the story of a 15 year old boy who looks after the mules that serve the front line. The book exposes racism, which led to almost 1,000 non white personnel being abandoned at Dunkirk. And it's a barely known story that young people need to read. And it's a much needed book to help inform the radical shift in decolonising the school curriculum as well. Bally Rye's atmospheric text also shows why speaking out and acting against injustice and prejudice is so important. The Closest Thing to Flying by Jill Lewis is tremendous. A young refugee in contemporary London finds a hidden diary written by a young woman in the 1890s. Um, the two stories intertwine, there are lots of issues and plenty of politics explored in a really nuanced and subtle way. It's a really gripping storyline with lively characters. I had no idea where it was going and I couldn't put it down. It's an absolute delight. The Boy Who Loved Everyone by Jane Porter and Maisie Paradise Shearing is a deceptively, deeply radical book on expressing love and the crushing effect of society's restrictions and judgments on who we can love even on a tiny and adorable preschooler. The text is divine. The illustrations are really something to rave about, depicting a gloriously inclusive cast of characters which will bring joy to your heart and it's heartening that it's a book for the very young and it gives promise for a better future. Phoebe Swan's King Leonard's Teddy is a beautifully illustrated story that encourages children to think about the impact of the throwaway society. Leonard's much loved Teddy is the catalyst for his realization that new stuff isn't always the best solution. He begins to fix things and buy fewer things, and in the process he becomes less of a solitary figure. It's a vision of a more environmentally friendly way of living that is offered for children to think about and to discuss. Sophia Valdez, Future Prayers, yay! This is a really inspiring and richly illustrated story about a young girl striving to make a difference not just for the sake of her own family, but also for that of others in her community and in her school. The book tracks her journey from compassionate school pupil to impactful social activist, and that really resonates with the Extinction Rebellion generation and where we are now in the world. It encourages us all to be compassionate and courageous on behalf of ourselves, but also on behalf of others, whoever they may be. 